Let's learn how to knit with double-pointed needles, also known as DPNs. This is used for knitting in the round, which is often how socks begin, from the cuff down, or you might use DPNs for sleeves, or a hat. I'm going to show you how to cast on first, and then I'm going to show you how I work with DPNs and distribute them on the needles and knit with them later. So if you need to cast on, make sure you have enough of a yarn tail to work your cast on, Use whatever cast on method that you like. I am in the slingshot position and I'm going to cast on 76 stitches for a sock. So I'm taking one double pointed needle, cast on all of your stitches, any cast on method you like. I'm using the German twisted cast on method because I love this for socks. You could do a long tail cast on, use any cast on you like. But basically, when you're casting on stitches, if you're working with socks and you have these long DPNs, this is pretty long to me. I think this one's about six inches or 15 centimeters long. And if you have these long DPNs, sometimes you can fit all of your cast on stitches onto one DPN before distributing them onto your other DPNs. So I'm gonna do that and get 76 stitches and I'll show you how I distribute them on the needles. As you're casting on, if you can't fit all of the stitches onto one needle, you could cast them on to the next needle. So I'm gonna use a new needle. I need to get 20 more stitches and I'm running out of space. They could go on there, but I'm going to just use this new needle and place it parallel to my needle with the stitches on it and just pretend that this is still my working needle. And that first stitch might feel a little weird, but get one stitch and then you could like drop that needle that already has the stitches on it and then just cast on the rest of the stitches onto this new needle. If you want to do that and place your stitches that you need to cast on, divide them by four and equally cast them on to four needles, you can do it this way. Like casting on a quarter of the stitches onto this needle and then when you work with the next quarter of the stitches, you could grab the next needle like this and just leave the other ones dangling. That's one way to cast on and distribute them onto four needles at the same time. But I'm going to just do it on a couple needles and then I'm going to distribute my stitches later. So either method works. But the most important thing is that you just get your total stitch count cast on. Once you have your total number of stitches cast on, you need to make sure they get distributed onto four DPNs. So a quarter of the stitches will go onto each of four needles. One, two, three, four. I'm just gonna slip my stitches onto a new needle and just keep on doing that until you have a quarter of the stitches evenly distributed onto four needles. If you're working with a stitch count that can't divide by four evenly, then it's okay if there's a couple more stitches on one needle and two or four stitches even fewer on the other needle. It doesn't have to be exact, but distribute your stitches onto four needles. Your cast on should look something like this, and it looks a little bit messy and dangly because we don't have any fabric yet. So look at the stitches on the needle, and do you notice how there's some a tiny little bit of yarn below the needle? You want to see that on every single needle where it's below, that little cast on below, below, below. You don't want it to twist. And do you see how all of these are going on the inside? And then all of a sudden, oops, this one's going on the outside. We need to look at it like that. So they're all on the inside here. Now let's just pinch and make a square and we're going to take the needle tip with the tail of yarn hanging from it. This is the working tail of yarn. It's coming from your right needle and we need to knit onto the next needle. So this is where the yarn is coming from, from my blue needle and just do a double check. We have our cast on and then all of that tiny little cast on edge, it's all on the inside. That's good. It's not twisted like that. So we're looking at it nicely and we're gonna go ahead and work your pattern. 
So I'm doing socks and I'm going to do some ribbing. So I'm going to knit two and that first stitch you can pull pretty tight. So work in your pattern, knit all of your stitches or do some ribbing, knit or purl, do whatever you need to do depending on your pattern. And that first row is going to feel pretty tight, okay? So just take it easy, be really careful. It's going to get easier and looser and more relaxed as you knit more rounds. But the first one is always a little bit tight feeling. So keep on going and I'll meet you at the end of this needle. When you work the final stitch of one DPN, place those stitches into the middle of the DPN so they don't get too close to the tips and fall off. Now we have a spare new needle and we're going to look over at the next needle. All right, so whenever I'm doing my needle changes, I position my new needle. I like it to be on top. And I also, so I'm looking here at my needle that I'm going into these stitches. This blue needle is on top of that needle and it's also on top of the other needle. And that's how I like to hold my knitting. I like the needle with the stitches I'm gonna knit. I like it to be on top of both needles and my new needle is also on top and everything else is on the bottom. So just to go to the next needle, use the new needle to work that first stitch. Again, whenever I work that first stitch, I do it a little bit tight. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy tight, but make sure it's nice and snug and you don't get a big gap between one needle and the next. So keep on going, working all of the stitches on this needle. I'm reaching the end of this needle. I'm purling the final two stitches of this needle. When you finish a needle, slide those stitches onto the middle. You have your free needle, rotate, and I'm gonna position this next needle on top of everything, on top. It's on top of the red needle and on top of the blue needle. I need my working yarn in the back and I have my blue needle that I'm gonna knit all the stitches, knit and purl the stitches. And this is how I like to hold my DPNs. Everything is on top. My new needles are on top of everything else. And that's all there is to it. You just do one needle at a time, transferring your stitches. And once you get a few rounds, it gets much easier as you go. And remember that you can feel free to adjust where your stitches are. Like if you want to end with purl stitches on every needle, you might need to move a couple stitches onto your next needle. And that's totally fine to do. So you can always shift over stitches and position them onto a different needle if you want to adjust how many stitches are on each needle. So do that depending on your pattern. And the, the final tip I want to give you is with stitch markers. Sometimes you're working with the pattern and it says to place a marker on your needle. But with DPNs, sometimes if you place a marker here, it's, it's just going to fall off because it's not on a circular needle. So I place my stitch markers, the split ring markers, in the actual knitting. If you need a stitch marker to help mark a decrease or an increase or to help mark the beginning of the round, just place it in the fabric rather than on the needle so that it's not going to just fall off. So that's how I work with DPNs. I love these, especially for socks. They just look really cool and intimidating with all those spiky points. So I love the look of it, but it feels really comfortable for sock knitting because you don't have that dangly cord from the magic loop technique. So I do both. I like magic loop and DPNs, but for different projects. So for socks, this is my preferred method. Give it a try. If you don't like DPNs, then try the magic loop method or even tiny little circulars. That might be your favorite method for knitting small circumferences in the round. Give it a try and let me know how you like knitting with DPNs. If you liked this video, there's a lot of other fun techniques on my channel. And especially for socks, I have a really fun how to knit socks workshop at westknits.com. So we're gonna learn all of this cast on techniques, the legs and the heels of the socks, so you can learn a lot more from my workshops at westknits.com or keep watching all my free tutorials here on YouTube to add new skills to your knitting repertoire.